So I wanted to start today with a very unique product that I think is really the next step in evolution of cloud storage. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about Internext. They recently approached me and asked me to do a video uh, about their product, to which I agreed. I am, I am not being paid to do this video. Uh, my thoughts on this are my own. They don't get to see this video. But they, they did provide me with a top-tier uh, cloud access, so that gives me about two terabytes worth of storage in order to be able to review the product thoroughly and also to provide you with a 25% discount code, which I will do today. So that's my truth in, in this. Um, so... I wanted to start with a quote by their CEO, by Fran uh, Villaaba, and he said, Today the internet is controlled by technology giants that offer services and products that are a means to an end. Services that have become essential in our lives and are used to collect data from users to better profile them as they live off of advertising. Privacy should not have to have such a high cost. We believe in a more ethical internet where user privacy is at its core. I think, I, I'm not speaking for you, but speaking for myself, yes, that is definitely something that I want. I don't, I'm, I'm tired of being the product, and, uh, and I'm sure you are too. What is this? What does this thing do? So I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to divide this talk up into two sections today. One is for those of you that don't care about the technical details that just want to understand what does this do for me. And then it, I'll, I'll do a more technical in-depth in the second half to explain how things work. So Internex is a, is a cloud storage device, but it is different than most of the ones that are out there. There are some that are similar. Uh, but they have not gone quite as far as Internext has gone in the evolution. So what the heck does all that mean anyway? What are you talking about? So the, the whole thing starts when you sign up for an account, and that basically creates your passphrase. They create it for you, uh, and they place that passphrase based on your password into your client. So... This is zero knowledge based cloud storage. So they don't know anything about uh, your password, nor do they want to. Your password is not stored with anywhere within the system uh, unless you provide links to people that you're sharing the data with. So you have that choice. You hold the cards here on everything that's done. So the passphrase that's generated is called a mnemonic. That is what is used to encrypt your data before it leaves your client. So if, whether that client be the web or whether that be your cell phone or whether that be an application that you're running, uh, the internext application that you're running. So at this point, once you've done that, it acts like any other cloud storage platform that you may have. In other words, it allows me to create directories, store files, store photos, and share those with other people. The other thing that you have control over is you can specify how many downloads you will allow on a particular file. Once it exceeds that count, no more, no more sharing is done. Let's talk about the technical side of this for a minute. So if you want to know how it actually works to encrypt and decrypt your data, first of all, it is using what they call military-grade encryption. And in actuality, it's AES-256, which is fine. I mean, that's a very strong protocol uh, and is used in a lot of VPNs today. So, yeah, we, we see that being used a lot. Um, nothing that you upload to the internet is in raw readable form. So everything is encrypted before it leaves your workstation. That encryption then goes a step further. They take your file and 
break it apart using a process called sharding. Now, uh, sharding has been around with us for quite some time. Databases have used this, search engines have used this in order to increase uh, the ability to process in parallel uh, and also minimizing the exposure that a file would have. In other words, if I break the key on a particular server, then only that bit of the file is exposed. I, I don't lose the rest of it. The other thing is, is that no one knows where all those shards are located except you. Your client is the only one that knows anything about how to assemble them and in what order to put the file back in, in together again. What about sharing files with other people? What happens then? So, Internex doesn't store the mnemonic with the file. That's on your side of the system. It, it does, however, contain the link. And the information that is in that link is used to correctly generate the decryption key uh, and be able to allow them to download the file without corrupting it. They, also, they use peer-to-peer -peer networks because they don't want to be dependent on a centralized database or a centralized server or a centralized storage. I mean, today, that's the, that's a, that's where, that's the, uh, that's the golden ticket, right? Uh, you, if you go after the centralized storage, once you've decrypted that, you have the entirety of the file. Well, that's not going to work so well with with peer-to-peer uh, -peer networks because you are scattered, and they cannot be opened by the host on which the, that file is or that shard is stored, because they don't have any information that they can use to generate the decryption key. They also use blockchain in in the process of managing this, and blockchain is used to record the transactions and movement of the data and it's tracked and organized on the blockchain. So if the information that it contained in that shard or in that file is tampered or there is an attempt to alter it, then the blockchain will contain a listing of that, of that occurrence and it can be corrected. The other thing about Internext is that they're a little different. They're, they are building this technology on Web3. Well, what's Web3? Back in the early 90s, we had Web1, which was the original Tim Berners-Lee uh, HTTP server. That was also known as the read-only web. Uh, it was typified by access with modems, usually had spinning logos, and some of them were on fire. I mean, that, yeah, that was kind of the, uh, the typical website they or they would allow you to browse and pick up information and they might have links to other websites where you could get additional information. But yeah, it wasn't a particularly useful one and it certainly wasn't useful for e-commerce or any of the things we know today. Web 2 is the social web and Web 2 is where we currently are in the deployment phase of the web technologies. Web3, though, brings the decentralized web. So why, why, why is that? What do we need the decentralized web for? Well, Web2 plays too much control in the hands of, of large companies. Well, they started out small, but they came, became large as the social web grew. And so they became quite powerful, and they now can threaten your access to that social web by simply turning your account off. Web3 is designed to wrestle that control back from the big tech and to distribute access and agency to the users where it actually belongs. So, and not in the hands of large corporations that are more interested in mining your data and selling you to their, for their ad base. So the, the thing that makes Web3 notable and, and identifiable is, first of all, it's trustless. So there is no central point of trust. Uh, it is also verifiable because it uses blockchain to do that. And it's self-governing. Uh, it's usually typified by linked data or sharded data, blockchains, and decentralized web. So 
And that is how Internex is built. That's how their cloud services are built. They're totally decentralized. There are th three products that Internex provides, uh, and they're all they're all bundled under one price. So the only thing that you do on Internex is you choose how much storage you want. All of the features are available, even from the the lowest uh, the lowest base subscription all the way up to the top tier and we'll talk more about that at the end here so the first product is called drive drive is the cloud storage uh, and that provides a mechanism for you to create folders store files retrieve files uh, as well as photos it also syncs automatically between their devices so that you always have uh, an up-to-date copy on all of the devices that are using drive uh, now you can, you don't have to use that. If you're using the web client, then it doesn't sync. So um, it offers uh, military grade encryption and file sharing. And also it is zero knowledge. That is they, there aren't any encryption keys that are stored on their servers or on their partner servers. So nobody knows anything about being able to decrypt the file except you. So yeah, it's, it's not possible. You control who you share the files with, and you control how many times you allow it to be downloaded. The other feature of Drive that you have is that you can you can specify a portion of your local file system that you feel is critical and that you want to keep backed up. And so it will place that in a special location within the uh, cloud storage using the same mechanisms that it does for all of the files that it stores. It just organizes it better for you when you retrieve things later. The other thing, all of the source code for all of the products, whether that be the server or the client or the mobile devices, it's all publicized and kept on GitHub. And I will put the links below on where you can find the source code for their products. So they're totally transparent and totally open about what they're doing. And I think that's pretty cool. There are other cloud providers that do that as well. And I and I think that is a really cool trend, uh, being that this is a Linux channel <laughs> dealing with open source. The second product is the, is the photo, and that is used from your cell phone or mobile device. That allows to keep your phone's photos all in one place. So it automatically syncs between the phone and a location in your cloud storage called the photo gallery. So again, that's accessible from Drive. It's uh, also accessible from other cell phones as well. But it just gives you a place where, hey, I can, I can, I don't have to worry about losing my photos. I have a place where I can back them up and keep them, and then I can work through them at my leisure to determine which ones I want to keep, which ones I want to share, and which ones I want to discard. So again, it has all the same security and zero knowledge technology of all the other products. And as I've mentioned before, the source code is available on GitHub. A third product is called Send. And this is something that something like this that I have used in, in professional settings where you need to send a file securely through the internet and you want to make sure that the recipient is the only one that can get it. So this is, um, this is called send, and that encrypts and sends files in total privacy. It is, it is kind of a place where you drop the file, and then you notify the recipient either via email or by sending a link and whatever mechanism you choose to do, the, do so, where they can then retrieve that file, and it will in, the information in the link contains how to decrypt and it will automatically decrypt that file and allow and assemble it correctly for them. Again, the source code is available on GitHub. So there's two additional tools that you have access to as well. There's a password checker that makes sure that your passwords are up to snuff. They also support 2FA through Authy. So if you're interested in using that, you can. Um, also, it that uh, there's a secondary product, which is a free virus scanner. So if you're getting ready to deploy or share files with other people, 
you know, it's always a good idea to do a to do a, a virus scan. So they have created a tool which allows you to drop it into the file scanner, and it'll do the virus check and then tell you if there's a virus there or not. So the pricing plans uh, that you have is the first one is a free plan. Uh, all of these plans, like I said, have exactly the same features. They are except for the only thing that might differ is the support options. So other than the fact that the uh, storage and the amount of storage you have is different for all of them. So the free plan gives you 10 gigabyte of storage for life. And that that's that's good from the time you start until you decide not to ever use the system again and and delete your account. Uh, deleting your account also destroys all of the files, of course. So you need not be concerned about that. Um, the second plan is a 20 gig plan, and that's offered at, uh, it's in euros. This is uh, 0.89 euros per month. These are all based on an annualized payment. So, uh, and then there's a 200 gig plan, which is offered at 349 per month. And a two terabyte plan that's offered at eight ninety nine per month. Now, if you go look at some of the plans from Dropbox or Apple or Google, you'll find that theirs is cheaper than the others. So, uh, yeah. Also, all the plans offer encrypted file storage, and all of them allow access from any devices. And the devices that you can use are Mac OS, Windows, uh, Linux. And the only one I have tested is Ubuntu. Uh, and I tried it with Debian. Debian does not work. There's a missing file with it. Uh, so um, there's also Android and iOS devices as well that are supported for this as, to access this. And then, of course, you can always use the, a browser to access your account and your files as well. So I guess one last thought in closing up today uh, for those of you who self-host, yes, you can self-host uh, on Nextcloud or OwnCloud or Synology, which, whichever mechanism you decide to use. But here's the thing. Whenever you're the, you're the host, you're the one that has to make sure, be vigilant about keeping your system safe and up-to-date, making sure that your cloud servers are secured uh, all of the latest patches are, are, have been applied not only to the cloud software, but also to its dependency chain. It's, if it's using a database, making sure that that's kept up to date. If it's using a, a, web, a web server, making sure that's kept up to date, uh, as well as the operating system that is hosting it. So, yeah, all of that falls on you. Also, backup of the data, that's your responsibility. And um, security is also your responsibility. And on that note, NextCloud and OwnCloud do not secure by encryption by default. And there is no encryption by default. Your data is stored in the clear. It is sent in the clear. Uh, and there is a database that also stores in the clear. So if you want encryption... Uh, file encryption in transit and file encryption at rest, you've got to set that up yourself. So yeah, it's not going to do it for you. I'm going to put the uh, discount code below. Uh, if you're interested, I mean, I would suggest going trying it out uh, with the free account. And then if you're interested in purchasing additional storage, I have 25% off for you. So with that, that's all I have today. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please like and subscribe. Hope to see you all again real soon. Bye for now.